Well, hey kids, Mr. Brett here, and I am really excited about today's story. Matter of fact, it's one of my favorite stories in the whole Bible. It's the story of Ruth and Naomi. But before we get there, let's remind ourselves of the rest of the story. Let's go all the way back, okay? Remember, we started with creation. And creation, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created everything. And then after creation came Noah. And then after Noah came Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And then after them came Moses. And then after Moses, God sent judges to lead his people and to rule over the land. And then after judges, God sent kings. Well, today's story takes place in between the period of the judges and the kings. It's the story of Ruth and Naomi, like I told you. And man, is it a great story. And it's one that you want to hang on and hold on and wait to hear. Some would say that this story about Ruth and Naomi is a love story. Some would say it's a story about devotion. Some would say it's a story about overcoming hard times. But I want you to listen today. I want you to tune in and I want you to decide what this story is about. Well, our story begins in the town of Bethlehem. You've heard of Bethlehem, haven't you? Well, that's where this story takes place. And it's in the midst of a bad economy. You've probably heard that term. And such was the case in Bethlehem. They were having bad economic times. And so this man named Elimelech and his wife Naomi and their two kids, they moved from Bethlehem all the way over to a place called Moab. And so when they get over there, guess what happens? Well, Naomi's husband dies, and it was very, very sad, but it was the reality of her life. And so her husband died, and then 10 years later, guess what happens? Her two sons die. So can you imagine your whole family passing away and how tragic that would be and hard that would be? Well, her two sons married two Moabite women. Remember, they moved to Moab, so the women that they married were Moabites. One of them's name was Ruth, and the other one's name was Orpah. Well, it came time for Naomi. She decided that she was going to move back from Moab all the way back to Bethlehem. And she told her two daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah, she said, you girls just need to stay here. You need to stay with your families. I'm going to go back to Bethlehem. Don't worry about me. Well, at first they both wanted to come with her, but she said, no, 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 I insist. You guys stay here. And what happened was Orpah decided to stay, but not Ruth. Ruth said that where you go, I will go that your people will be my people, that your God will be my God. And she was saying, no matter what, Naomi, I am going to follow you. I'm going to be committed to you. Can you believe that? Can you believe how much commitment it would take to say, you know what, I'm going to leave everything behind and I'm going to follow you. You know, sometimes as a preacher, people ask me to perform their wedding ceremony. And I'm glad to do that. And you know that that's one of the verses that I use sometimes from the book of Ruth? That same exact verse that where you go, I will go. And where your people are, they will be my people and your God will be my God. And it's a great example of the commitment that is expected between a husband and a wife. And so that's why I use that in some wedding ceremonies. Well, Let's get back to our story. So Naomi and Ruth get back to Bethlehem. And Ruth goes to work in this field and she meets this man named Boaz. And Boaz is attracted to her, not just because of her physical beauty, but because of the way that she acted, her character. And he had heard the stories of how she had been committed to her mother-in-law, Naomi. Let me ask you, what attracts you to other people? Are you attracted to people that just because they look good or because they have money or because they're successful or because they're popular? Or are you attracted to people because they strive to follow God and because they have good character? 
It's an important question for us to ask. And that's why Boaz was attracted to Ruth. And so, Naomi tells Ruth that Boaz is one of their kinsmen redeemers. Now, what in the world is a kinsman redeemer? I want everybody to say that with me. On the count of three, I want everybody to say kinsman redeemer. Okay? One, two, three. That's good. But, but what in the world is a kinsman redeemer? Well, you've probably heard the word kin. You know, in the South, a lot of times we say, yeah, over yonder lives my kinfolk. You know, we say stuff like that. Or, or my kin folk over there and back in the woods. Well, well, that's what a kin is. It's, it's just a relative, like a cousin or an aunt or uncle or somebody. But back in these days, people had to have a kinsman that could come and redeem them. That could come and, and could, could marry them or take over their land. It's, it's a relative that kind of carries on the family name, if you will. So, Boaz was that person. But you know what? Boaz told them that there is one who was closer in a relationship than even he. And he really had the right to Ruth before Boaz did. And so, you're sitting there listening to the story, you're reading the story, and you're thinking, all right, Boaz and Ruth are going to get together. And then you think, oh man, there's somebody else. It's like, listening to a love story and then there's somebody else in the picture and you're like oh man that's crazy but that's not the end of the story see there was somebody else that was closer in line but he chose not to take Ruth and so Boaz gets Ruth and they get married and they even have a kid they have a kid named Obed now, what's so special about Obed? Well, Obed had a kid named Jesse. And Jesse had a kid named David. Anybody ever heard of King David? Well, that's where he came from. Can you believe that, that the greatest king of all time came from this story of Ruth and Boaz? Wow. Wow. And then there's something even greater than that, that the greatest king of kings of all time, Jesus Christ, even came from this family. Isn't that crazy how God uses our stories, how he blends them together and how he has a plan through it all? It's called his story of redemption. And he's still in the redeeming business. And aren't you thankful that you and I have a kinsman redeemer? And his name is Jesus Christ. So, I want everybody to remember that today. That you have a kinsman redeemer. And his name is Jesus. Okay, until next time.